Hello everyone, I am the Benedict Kirby, and welcome to my channel, The Commander Tavern. The Commander Tavern is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic the Gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews and other deck techs. On this episode of The Brewery, I'll be discussing my take on a Commander from Jumpstart 2022, Preston the Vanisher. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my CCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description, it'll really help out the channel. But the very best way you can help support the channel is with my Patreon. There are plenty of perks for being a patron such as early access to certain videos, exclusive deck texts, gifts, and more. You can also support my channel for free by simply liking, subscribing, and sharing which also helps out a lot. I put out a video every Monday, so you don't want to miss out. You can join my Discord server for free if you want to join the Commander Tavern community. All pertinent links are down in the description. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Preston is a 2-5 rabbit wizard for 3 generic and 1 white. He has a triggered ability where you create a 0-1 white illusion copy of any creature entering the battlefield under your control if that creature wasn't cast. This ability is absolutely busted and I love it. Since Preston is one of the chase cards from the blink pack of the Jumpstart 2022 boosters, blinking the creatures to trigger him will be the first thing, if not the only thing, that comes to players' minds. However, you'll also get those tokens if the creature enters the battlefield somehow else, such as being cheated into play from your hand, reanimated, etc. So you don't have to necessarily be blinking your creatures. Another interesting way to build Preston would be an Aristocrat's Root by sacrificing your creatures for value and then reanimating them, since that counts as entering the battlefield without being cast. That is, of course, if you're actually reanimating them and not casting them from the graveyard. Very important distinction. Same with effects that let you cast spells from Exile, like Foretell, etc. If this wasn't enough, you could pay 2 mana and sacrifice 5 illusions to exile target non-land permanent. Preston was already amazing with his triggered ability, but his activated ability is just icing on the cake since it's removal on a body in the command zone. Let's begin with the most obvious course of action, blinking. For me, when I'm building blinking decks like this one, a mechanic and theme I absolutely enjoy, I group my blinking effects into 3 categories. Prison, Delayed, and Immediate. By prison, I mean Oblivion Ring-like effects that exile a permanent until the exiling permanent leaves the battlefield. By Delayed Blink, I mean effects that exile a permanent to then return them at the beginning of the next end step. And by Immediate Blink, I mean effects that exile a permanent and then, in the same instance, return it to the battlefield. While all of these are amazing and useful, in this deck you can only really achieve Infinity with the Oblivion Ring type and Immediate Blink type effects. For the Prison type effects, I'm running Abdel Adrian, Gorion's Ward, Lumbering Battlement, Glorious Protector, Fiend Hunter, Golden Argosy, and to a certain extent Mirror of Life Trapping. So let's start with that one. The Mirror is amazing for us and annoying for opponents since it's a symmetric effect. We might not necessarily care about getting immediate value from a creature since the deck has so many. Plus we'd rather get double the effect when the creature returns from exile if we control Preston. But the opponent won't get the immediate effect of their creature cast because once they do, it gets exiled with the mirror until someone else casts a creature. They can bypass this by casting another creature afterwards, which means they also have to plan ahead and chain their actions accordingly. We don't mind and it's just another enabler for Preston, while also being a nuisance to opponents. Definitely a spicy card here. Golden Argussi is amazing at mass blinking all of our creatures if it manages to connect. The deck is running Rogue's Passage to help this vehicle get through in order to not die in combat damage, but don't rely too much on it since it doesn't have any evasion. That being said, when it does attack, you will get a ton of enter the battlefield effects and tokens if you're controlling Preston. The rest of these can also be used for hijinxes so they can exile away until a rainy day. This can serve as protection but also interaction as in the case of Fiend Hunter. This one is only limited to one target but it's still useful as a combo enabler. Abdel Adrian is obviously the best one because he also provides us with a ton of tokens, which the deck absolutely loves. Let's see then how we can combo off with these. If we're just working with these, we need at least 3 in any combination, unless we're controlling Preston and another blink effect, but we'll see that in a bit. So let's imagine we already have Fiend Hunter on the battlefield. Now let's have Abdel enter the battlefield, exiling Fiend Hunter. Now we just have to exile Abdel to start the chain until we want to stop. We can do this with maybe Lumbering Battlement entering the battlefield. When it does, we, and we exile Abdel, Fiend Hunter will return. When Fiend Hunter returning, we can exile Lumbering Battlement to it. Doing so returns Abdel and we can start all over again. The best thing about these interactions is that they're independent of our commander. In this particular case, if uninterrupted, we can create infinitely many tokens with just Abdel, which is a win con in and of itself. However, we'll see more of the deck's win cons in a moment. For now, Abdel is one of the best ones because he's also a blink enabler, in mass no less, which is amazing when Preston is on the battlefield. So even if not going to infinity, these effects are amazing in the deck. Continuing on, we have Felidar Guardian, Icewind Stalwart, Restoration Angel, and Wisp Weaver Angel, which are immediate blink effects. Not only are these amazing at triggering Preston to get us token copies of any key creature with an enter the battlefield trigger in order to double that effect, but they can also go infinite in combination with each other or with any of the four previously mentioned creatures. 
They can also be used reactively like Restoration Angel, which is amazing at helping us fizzle any spell or effect targeting any of our non-angel creatures. In any case, let's see what I mean with Infinity. Let's start with Felidar Guardian on the battlefield. If we then have something like Icewind Stalwart enter the battlefield, it'll blink Felidar Guardian. It then returns immediately, thus allowing it to blink Icewind Stalwart. We can now let this loop as often as we want. With Preston on the battlefield, we'll create infinitely many illusion copies of each. Those copies can then be blinking other key creatures while the originals are blinking each other. So this engine will let us get infinitely many triggers of any enter the battlefield triggers we may have. Distinguish Conjurer and Eldrazi's Displacer also provide immediate blink effects, but on activated abilities instead of enter the battlefield triggered abilities. What this means is that while they won't necessarily enable infinity, they're still amazing at re-triggering any useful enter the battlefield trigger. Having precedent play with these is quite the bonus since we'll get that effect twice thanks to the token copy. They're also amazing at protecting our creatures from targeting effects since they'll fizzle out of the stack. The Displacer in particular can also be used to exile any potential attacker headed our way or even blocker since the creature returns tapped. The Displacer is so good that the deck is running Fabled Passage and Prismatic Vista for the sole copy of Wastes in the deck. That way we'll always have a colorless source of mana to activate it. The deck is still running other colorless sources of mana, Ancient Tomb being another one of them, but at least once we have waste, then these fetch lands are still useful at thinning the deck of basic planes. Going back to immediate blink effects, Conjurer's Closet, Teleportation Circle, and Far Traveler are sort of like the bridge between immediate and delayed. The reason being that while their trigger is immediate, it does trigger at the beginning of our end step, so we do have to wait until the end of our turn to benefit from it. No matter though, since that just means doubling down on any enter the battlefield trigger at the end of our turn, twice if we control press them. As for those actual delayed blink effects, the deck is running Angel of Condemnation for starters. While this can be used along the same vein as Distinguished Conjurer and Eldrazi Displacer, the creature won't immediately return. However, while that might seem like a downside, if we want immediate value, this can not only help fizzle out targeted effects, but also protect any key creature from a board wipe. Since the creature returns at the beginning of the next end step, they'll essentially survive the board wipe. Since it can also target opponent's creatures, we can also use it to imprison them, since it also has a Fiend Hunter type of application if we exert it. So it also functions as interaction. As for the rest of the deck's blink delayed effects, it's running Eerie Interlude, Ghostway, Lazel's Acrobatics, Semester's End, and Sudden Disappearance. The last one is a sorcery, so it can be cast at the beginning of an opponent's end step for maximum time efficiency, but it's still amazing nonetheless, since we can all get those enter the battlefield triggers. However, more importantly, we'll be cast before casting a board wipe so as to make it one sided. Same with the first four, but since these are instants, we can also just hold these up in order to respond to any of our opponent's own board wipes, thus potentially being the sole survivors. The deck is still running board wipe protection like Flawless Maneuver, Teferi's Protection, and Guardian of Faith. However, if we have neither of these in hand, but we do have something like Eerie Interlude, then don't waste it. Use it instead, and then we can worry about blinking our creatures later. We can't really use it to blink them if we don't have them on the board. Cosmic Intervention, Face Reward, and Second Sunrise are amazing if we did lose our board to a board wipe, or at least it might seem that way. While blinking or facing out our board or giving our creatures indestructible might seem like the best play against an opposing board wipe, casting either of these due to a board wipe is top top tier pro gamer move. Cosmic Intervention has to be cast in response to the board wipe though, while Faith Reward and Second Sunrise are cast after the creatures die. Since our creatures are reanimated in mass and not cast from the graveyard, if Preston were one such creature returning, then we'll also get those 0-1 illusion token copies for our trouble. So good. Especially if we're the ones wiping the board with either Osir Command, Ondo Inversion, or Vanquish the Horde. It's always risky to run board wipes in a creature dependent deck, but we also can't assume that we'll always have the best board state. So while these are great at dealing with worse board state than ours, if we cast these while also protecting our own board, they become potentially game ending. And Ondo Inversion doesn't even take up a slot in the deck for having its backside be a land, assuming you're not greedy with land drops while playing it. Speaking of, these mass blink and reanimate spells become even more busted if we're also controlling Panharmonicon and Anointed Procession. Granted, these are obviously not blinking effects, but they're so synergistic with them that I might as well get them out of the way. Panharmonicon is absolutely busted in this deck, and Anointed Procession also helps double those enter the battlefield triggers by doubling the amount of tokens Preston creates, as well as the other token generators in the deck. Alright, now that we saw all the Preston enablers, both the blinking effects and the reanimation effects, how do we win? Surely Abdel Adrian isn't the only deck's win con, and you'd be right. While there are innumerable ways for you to make the most of this infinite looping engine, I decided to go with a more off the beaten path approach to winning. And that is with Venturing. Radiant Solar and White Plume Adventure help us achieve this. Radiant Solar helps us venture through more dungeons much faster since it triggers whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under our control. So even without going infinite, we're going to be venturing through dungeons at a neck-breaking pace if we're continuously blinking our creatures in mass. 
The adventurer giving us the initiative gives us access to Undercity. Venturing through this dungeon infinitely many times means going through Trap infinitely many times. This will inevitably kill the entire board. However, the initiative alone won't let us venture through any of the other three dungeons and vice versa. But that's fine since we can also venture infinitely many times through Lost Mine of Phandelver in order to go through Dark Pool infinitely many times, which is probably better since it hits all opponents, so it doesn't target. That being said, once we have the initiative, bar it in any of the other three dungeons, we can still venture through them. These dungeons are also amazing on their own even before we're going infinite, so these creatures are amazing in the deck in a vacuum as well. Looking at the dungeons, we can see that we have plenty of options to choose from depending on what we might need. Granted, without an epic engine like Radiant Solar and blinking a ton of creatures multiple times, it might be too slow. But the deck is mono white. These dungeons have rooms that create treasure tokens, tutor for lands, draws cards, scry, etc. So they are still useful to go through. But as previously mentioned, you can use whatever outcome you like with the deck's infinitely looping blink engines. Continuing along my off the beaten path brand of win cons, we have Park Bleeder. This thing can rack us up a ton of ticket counters. You wish you had this thing if you were ever at an arcade or carnival. It's intense. Best part about it is that it doesn't care if the creature is a token or not, unlike the previously mentioned Radiant Solar. Then, for one white and tapping, you can put a sticker on a creature you own that enters the battlefield. Okay, so how is this a win con? Well, it can be a win con. This is unfortunately due to the high variance nature of stickers and its rules for both deck building and starting the game. Here are the deck's sticker board. Yes, I know stickers were, and still are, a hot topic in the community, but bear with me. Afterwards, I'll show you what I do with my own stickers to help you convince you that maybe they're not so bad. Again, just bear with me. If you look at the first 6 sticker sheets, these have ability stickers that could potentially win us the game once we're going infinite. Cool Fluffy Loxodon has an ability sticker that can potentially turn Preston into a 2 turn clock if it manages to get through since it'll be a 13-13. As a bonus, it also has a sticker that draws us a card whenever the stickered permanent leaves the battlefield. So this sticker sheet is great. Deep Fried Plague Mirror and Goblin Coward Parade have an ability sticker that destroys something whenever the sticker permanent leaves the battlefield. The former destroys an artifact or enchantment and the latter a creature with power 4 or greater. Familiar Beeble Mascot has an ability sticker that pumps our creatures plus 1 plus 1 whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control. With enough of a board presence, whether by presence, illusion copies, or actual bodies, blinking a creature or even blinking multiple creatures will give us quite the army for the Alva Strike. Geek Lotus Warrior has an ability sticker that will definitely win us the game once we're going infinite because it'll deal 2 damage to target player whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control. A bit slower than Perforos, but it'll get the job done regardless. Yawgmoth Merfolk Soul has 2 amazing ability stickers for this deck just like cool fluffy Loxodon does. So if you do go this route, make sure to run this one, along with the other one. The first ability sticker has an opponent discard a card whenever the sticker permanent leaves the battlefield. The second ability sticker has us create 5 1 1 artifact creature tokens when it leaves the battlefield. With the way stickers work, the ideal creature to stick these on is our commander. That's because stickers remain attached to the sticker permanent throughout all public zones. So we might lose access to any of these stickers if placed on another permanent since we might not be able to get it back into our hand or library before getting destroyed or exiled. However, when placed on Preston, we can always recast him from the command zone where he will keep the stickers for being a public zone. The last 4 sticker sheets in particular, since they have protective effects that will remain on Preston, they provide either Hexproof, Persist, Undying, and Indestructible. Granted, as I mentioned earlier, with the way stickers work, you can't choose which 3 to start the game with, just which 10 to have in your deck to then get 3 at random. That being said, regardless of which 3, you will get tons of an advantage from either of the ability stickers I mentioned. Even if all 3 stickers are protective effects, you're essentially giving Preston those protective keywords perpetually. Granted, the deck is still running Swift of Boost to protect Preston or any other key creature. I'm not a total madman. Same with spot removal like Path to Exile and Return to Dust. Stickers are cool and all, but you don't have the same level of certainty with them. But in any case, either combination of stickers would be good regardless of the variance. And with all this without considering the base power toughness altering stickers which can also provide the potential of commander damage wins by beefing up Preston's power. We could even use the name stickers if you wanted to, assuming you're able to clone Preston somehow. If we had a name sticker, the copy wouldn't be sent to the graveyard as a state based action. Ok, now let's say I convince you that stickers are worth the effort here. As a product, they're not really that good because they can only restick maybe once or twice before being more of a tiny piece of paper than a sticker. Well, I made an accompanying video for this deck tech which you can find a link for up above. In it, I explain what I did in order to quote unquote fix the sticker issue and make them permanent. This is partly why today's episode was a bit late in coming out if you were waiting for it. Back to win cons, Stonehorde Unitary isn't a win con per se, but it can definitely help us out by preventing an opponent from attacking us. Yes, it will also prevent them from attacking altogether, meaning they can just keep their creatures untapped for blocking. 
But if we're able to blink this enough times where no one can attack us, then we can survive long enough to assemble our game ending board state. However, if this type of strategy is too annoying and you don't like it, you can just swap it out for something less egregious. Now that we know how the deck wins, how do we get there? Curiously, White now has quite the assortment of card, draw, and land based ramp effects. Not a ton, but at least we've reached enough for critical mass. Combat Thresher, Inspiring Overseer, Priest of Ancient Lore, Roving Harper, Sky Scanner, Spirited Companion, and Wall of Omens each draw us a card when entering the battlefield. While the first 5 cost 3 mana to cast, they do replace themselves and can then be blinked for value. Don't underestimate the power of these cards in a blinking deck like this one. They will draw you a ton of cards throughout the game. Mentor of the Meek, Rumor Gatherer, Tocassia's Welcome, and Welcoming Vampire also draws cards but whenever another creature enters the battlefield. Unfortunately, the last two only trigger once per turn and Rumor Gatherer technically only triggers once per turn as well, since it'll only draw us a card with the second creature that enters the battlefield under our control. All of the other triggers will have us scribe one instead. That's so good since we can filter our top card. Mentor of the Meek requires paying mana, but it's not that bad, especially considering that it'll always trigger on Preston's illusion tokens. Spiring Commander being a digitally exclusive card, annoying me should be no surprise by now. I have absolutely no idea why this isn't being reprinted in paper, considering it has no digitally exclusive mechanics on it. But I digress. Skull Clamp is another amazing card draw engine, no surprise. If you are low on hand count, you can just equip this to a 0-1 illusion and draw two cards. Or one of Abdal's 1-1 soldier tokens. Or if you are creating 1-1 clown robot tokens. Or maybe you're creating 1-1 tokens thanks to Castle Ardenville and Dildren Outpost. These don't really take up slots in the deck and can be used to create chum blockers, skull clamp fodder, or ways to trigger the previously mentioned alliance triggers. Now, while Skull Clamp loves creatures with a toughness of 1, Inspiring Leader is in the deck. While the deck isn't fully about tokens, Preston is creating pretty weak tokens. If they were 2-3 and we were generating infinitely many of them, that in and of itself is a win con too. Going back to card advantage, Endless Atlas, Idol of Oblivion, and War Room are included as reputable ways to draw a card at instant speed and on command. Idol of Oblivion does require us to have created a token that turn to activate it though, but that's fine since we're going to be creating plenty of tokens anyways. Thought Vessel, The Candle of Endless Water, and Rail Glory Tower are included because of how many cards we can drop with this deck. In any case, with the first two being Mana Rocks, they're still a necessity for a mono white deck like this one, so they're good to have. They, along with Soul Ring, are the deck's only Mana Rocks. The deck is still ramping with things like Wayfarer's Bauble, Navigation Orb, Sword of the Animus, and Sword of Hearth and Home, which are better than Mana Rocks anyways. The swords are amazing because they can also be used to get that lone waste onto the battlefield. Do be wary about Sword of Hearth and Home though, since it gives protection from white. That won't let you target the equipped creature with any white spell or effect you have, particularly the blink effects. Speaking of, Quirk Cartographer, Solemn Simulacrum, and Stoic Farmer are amazing creatures to blink because they also ramp us. Keep in mind that if you cast Stoic Farmer from Exile with its foretell cost, that still counts as casting it, so it will not trigger Preston. Terrain Generator and Nyctos Shrine to Nyx are also included for mana acceleration. Terrain Generator helps us drop lands if we're drawing a ton of cards and Nyctos is just busted in mono white decks, no need to state the obvious. This view is just an idea of how to build around Preston the Vanisher. While Preston screams Blink, especially since he's literally the chase card of the Blink pack, you can still do some interesting things with him. For example, while drawing cards and ramping is a great use for ETB creatures, I'm also venturing and sticking stickers. That way it's at least somewhat of a fresh deck to play with and against, especially when winning that way, or beat down too. If you're interested in the decklist of this spicy brew of mine, you can find a link to it down in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me, and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the Brewers, for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG Player affiliate link, that also helps out the channel. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of the Brewery on the Commander Tavern. I'm Commander Kirby, and happy brewing!